My guest at this time is Stephen Aiden. He's the chief legal officer at Americans United for Life. We want to get his thoughts on House Republicans pushing a discharge petition to force a vote in the House of Representatives on legislation requiring abortion providers to take measures to save the lives of any babies born following attempted abortions. And Stephen, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thanks. Well, similar legislation got a majority in the Senate, but not 60 votes, which was what was needed to move it forward. Democrats, of course, uh, controlled the House of Representatives, and they have blocked numerous attempts uh, by Republicans to at least get a vote on this. Uh, so explain what the goal is here with the discharge petition. Absolutely. A discharge petition is a uh, signed document by a majority of the members of Congress that calls a bill to the floor to be voted on as a mechanism for removing obstruction in the way of good legislation. And that's what they voted on today. The uh, discharge petition was sponsored by Representative Steve Scalise from uh, Louisiana, the, the uh, minority whip. And uh, I attended a press conference with uh, Representative Scalise and many other members of Congress who are calling on that body to sign the discharge petition, let the members vote, and uh, to end, frankly, infanticide in America. Uh, that's what today was about, and it was an honor to be there, to be uh, in the House chamber when uh, all of those members of Congress, uh, I think it, the final figure was 190 of them, came forward to sign the discharge petition. It wasn't enough today uh, to get that number over the uh, amount for the, needed for the discharge, but the discharge petition stays open for this entire Congress, which goes through the next year and a half, actually, uh, the 116th Congress. So additional members can sign on at any time, and uh, folks can still call uh, their own representative and uh, and ask them to vote for the discharge petition and thank them if they have. So that's what today was about, and it was, as I said, it was a privilege to be there. So 190 votes. Uh, normally, if all the members are seated, it takes 218 to get to a majority. But I believe uh, there's about 429, 430 right now. There are some vacant seats. And so you're still about 25 members short. 190 is pretty much the entire Republican conference. Not entirely, but pretty close. Do you think you can find that many Democrats to come on board, not to be opposed to abortion, but to oppose uh, letting babies die from neglect because they uh, had the temerity to survive an abortion? Well, we're hopeful, but they need to hear from the American people. Uh, three members have committed to voting for the discharge. I haven't seen the list of members who voted today, so uh, I, I hope that they have, uh, but they expressed their intention to do so. That's uh, Representative uh, Kuyar from Texas, uh, Representative uh, Lipinski from uh, Illinois, uh, and uh, the representative from Minnesota, whose name, forgive me, escapes me at this moment. So it is a bipartisan piece of legislation, and we're hopeful that that will pull more Democrats in because this is a matter that we all can agree on, that babies who are born alive are human beings, they're persons, and uh, the law requires that they be given medical attention uh, and uh, be given a chance to survive uh, like everyone else. So uh, we're hopeful that that will happen. Uh, we're talking with uh, Steve Aiden uh, of the Americans United for Life. And, Steve, there's been a lot of different arguments from Democrats for why they're opposed to this legislation, or in the case of the House, why they won't even allow it to come up for a vote. Uh, it's everything from, well, infanticide's already illegal, this is completely unnecessary, to uh, you still can't come between a woman uh, and her doctor, and this is just a Republican ploy. So uh, what, what's your rebuttal to their arguments for not allowing this to go forward? So well, the Congress passed the Born Alive Infant Protection Act uh, some years ago, about 15, 20 years ago. But unfortunately, that bill was a paper tiger. It simply states that infants that are born alive after an abortion are persons and ought to receive medical attention. But there's no teeth to it. So that was passed unanimously. And now at this point in time, we've moved so far down the road that a bill that actually would impose penalties and legal accountability for people who allow human beings to suffer and die crying on a table in, a, in an abortion facility, uh, that is uh, now controversial. Um, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the folks that support this discharge petition have put their money where their mouth is. They're calling on uh, Congress to actually act uh, and uh, put the force of law 
behind the understanding that we're all persons. Uh, every person, uh, born and unborn, uh, deserves the same kind of uh, treatment, uh, including medical treatment, uh, under the law. We all deserve, as human beings, to be uh, given medical treatment, to have our suffering alleviated, to really share in basic milk of human kindness, uh, which, uh, unfortunately, it seems uh, is running a little short in Congress right now. How active have the uh, pro-choice organizations been in fighting this, the Planned Parenthoods and, and NARALs? Well, they've been, uh, yeah, they've been fighting tooth and nail against it. They know that uh, it establishes that uh, abortionists uh, are accountable under the law if uh, for some reason they don't deliver on what they promise to women. They promise to women uh, a dead baby, uh, frankly. And uh, when that doesn't happen, when uh, for some reason uh, the baby survives the abortion, uh, they have an obligation, uh, to, a moral obligation and a legal obligation uh, to uh, get that baby to uh, a hospital, to get it treatment, uh, to alleviate its suffering and try to get it survived. I mean, there are three uh, abortion survivors that stood up at the press conference uh, outside the House side of the Capitol building today and said, we exist. The uh, House Democrats would like you to think that we don't, but we do. And according to the data, there are potentially hundreds or thousands of people who have survived abortion that are alive today. Think of how many uh, have died uh, under those circumstances, willingly being left to die uh, and we'd be alive today if this law had the force and effect that uh, Republicans are trying to put behind it. So it's something that we should all get behind, and uh, folks should call uh, their representative and thank them if they voted for it uh, and continue to uh, demand that they vote for it if they haven't stood up and been counted yet. Last question, Steve. Uh, where do the American people stand on this? I know the numbers are pretty lopsided, even for abortions in uh, the second and certainly the third trimester. So when it comes to something like this, what do the numbers look like? Oh, yeah. Over 70 percent of Americans favor uh, much stricter regulation of abortion. They don't uh, agree with uh, late-term abortion uh, after 18 weeks when a baby can feel horrific pain on being torn limb from limb. Uh, this is not popular with the American people because uh, with the advent of ultrasound, uh, we all can see. Uh, for our, ourselves with our own two eyes uh, on an ultrasound image, all my children have, uh, that that's a human being. Uh, they can't put, they can't lie and say anymore that it's just a blob of tissue. We all know better. And uh, hopefully the conscience of America has been pricked. Uh, and hopefully uh, people will stand up and ask their, uh, their congressmen uh, to be counted on this uh, basic human rights issue. Steve, very much appreciate you being with us today. We'll certainly be tracking to see if the discharge petition can get to uh, the number needed to force a vote. Thanks very much again. My pleasure. Thank you. Stephen Aiden is Chief Legal Officer at Americans United for Life. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for Radio America.